Yes. And okay, so nice to see you and welcome, uh, Maria. Thank you. So today, uh, this uh, we are going to talk about. Uh, uh, your experience on meditation. So I would like to introduce you first. So uh, Maria is actually a university scholar in the UK and uh, she, is, she has been attending uh, my med meditation classes for some time. And today uh, we are going to listen uh, uh, her experience about meditation and also uh, we are going to do some uh, discussion about uh, some special, especially queries, especially from general people. Uh, so Maria is going to share her experience, her practice, and her knowledge to us. And also later we are going to discuss about uh, some of the questions she may have today. Okay. Um, well, starting with my experience, <laughs> I actually started getting interested in meditation because of the lockdown, <laughs> because I, <laughs> I thought I, I needed some way to, to calm down and to, to deal with it. And because meditation is something that you always hear about, that it's good to, kill, to calm you down and to keep you relaxed and all those things. Um, and so I actually started it with with some of these online um, guided meditations, you know, that it starts with, they give you a, a pretty phrase or some sort of mantra for you to repeat while you are meditating. And then it has some relaxation music in the background. Like, so that's not really the kind of meditation that, that Tesh teaches. So I would say maybe, maybe I would call that now more like relaxation um but that was that was really my my primer to get into this and i i think it was good to go through that first because it's like a smooth introduction uh because even with that more calm uh, way of meditating some people might find it difficult like i did in the very beginning uh so i think i'm glad that i started with that that i started with that and then then because of the lockdown we started talking yeah. and then that's when I was telling you, oh, I'm doing these meditation things. And, and Tesh was like, <laughs> you want to do the real meditation? I'll teach you how to do that. And so that's how we started it with the mindfulness kind of meditation. And it, it is hard, <laughs> but it is very, I would say it's useful. It does calm you it does calm you down and it also helps you be more focused and in general it like i've noticed after practicing for for all this long when i'm doing whatever to say like washing the dishes or something i am washing the dishes i'm not living in my head i'm, I'm just focused on washing the dishes and i, I don't think anything else um, and that is very useful because it, it makes you be more alert to, to everything that's, that's going on. Um, so that, that is my experience. <laughs> and maybe to start with the discussion, I would ask you, Tej, what would you say is the difference between relaxation and meditation? Because I think that's, the, that's a big thing that a lot of people get confused. Sometimes when, when they think that they are doing meditation by by setting up candles and incense and relaxing music and not doing anything that does meditation. But what, what do you think about it? Yeah, thank you, Maria. First of all, I think uh, I'm really glad that you've enjoyed meditation and also you have progressed. And uh, I can see your introduction about the meditation, your own experience. I'm really glad that uh, I can see some progress and also uh, how useful probably you find, especially in this lockdown, especially when it happens in the UK uh, since March actually. So, so it was uh, definitely something for our listeners. They can listen and they can also uh, relate to their own uh, experience, their own life and how meditation can help them. So this is what uh, probably will help and also encourage them to 
uh, to to do meditation, especially if they are stressed. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, going back to your question, especially uh, when we say relaxation and meditation, uh, of course, uh, uh, the purpose of uh, meditation is to get relaxation. So, especially if we have lots of worries uh, uh, or we have anxiety, we have stress or any kind of uh, problems in our life and we are not very much focused, uh, then meditation can become a very, very good tool to concentrate on something. Uh, and then when we say uh, relaxation, uh, especially when we do meditation, uh, most of the time our mind is wandering here and there. So this is because of the habit patterns of our mind, like a monkey. So sitting from one branch to another branch. So this is how our mind is. He wants something at the moment, this thing, but when you get this thing, it wants something else and something else. So it's always wander and it never stay in present moment. So when we do meditation, we want to focus at particular point, especially on our breath or also Buddha have given um, uh, I mean, with the time there was nearly 40 other objects we can focus. So once our mind is in one place, then definitely it become very calm, very peaceful, and it will bring a real relaxation. But when you mentioned, I mean, music, and also when people, they really feel very relaxed. So you see, when we are very relaxed and we are listening music, we are enjoying and we are finding very relaxing, then we become very lazy. We will uh, lost our, uh, especially awareness, our mindfulness, because we feel sleepy. So all the negative side, for example, we don't become very alert because we will feel sleepy, lazy, and we go to sleep. So our mind is not that active. And at the same time, we are not very much aware about the reality of what we can uh, experience in meditation. So this is why uh, sleep, uh, listening music, uh, sleeping and doing very good uh, relaxation, it is good for some time. But if we want to really think uh, uh, peace of mind and especially to get progress and to actually also to get enlightenment, uh, we need meditation to be very alert and being peaceful and alert through meditation. So this is why mm -hmm. we have to sit down cross leg and rather than distracting ourselves in, uh, to the music or any other uh, object we have to focus in one point yeah now that you're saying this not falling asleep so what and you've told me before that falling asleep is like a big no-no <laughs> when you're meditating is there another big kind of no-no to do while meditating so, uh, so for example, sleeping is a very, very natural phenomenon. Once you, you feel uh, very relaxed, you will really stop, start to sleep. Uh, but also in meditation, there is a word we call bhavanga. And bhavanga is the state where you are not fully asleep, but you are not awake, but you have no control over your senses. So for example, you don't know what, uh, I mean, you, you don't uh, aware about any sound, about any smell or anything. You just lost control of your, your, your sense organ. So that is what happens sometimes. We are doing meditation and our mind go to a kind of sleep, between sleep and awake, and we are not aware whatever is going on. So this is also a kind of, uh, we can say, a hindrance. So these, these things is an obstacle for meditation. Even being laziness and our worries, our doubts, these are sort of uh, obstacle which stops uh, progression of our meditation. But, but once we come over through all these hindrances, we can start to experience some uh, sorts of like enlightenment or more wisdom. Mm. So ideally, let's, let's not try to do it uh, late at night when one is all tired. <laughs> Which uh, leads me to say these other things, right? That what, what's the best time for doing it? I, I like to do it before I start doing anything else in, in my morning or maybe right after breakfast if I wake up very hungry, but it's before I get my mind worked out with the daily activities. Yeah, I think so. I think that is the morning is the quite best time because you, you don't have lots of uh, 
you haven't met many, many people, you haven't went to your business and you don't have lots of things, whatever going around in, in our daily life. So our mind is quite fresh and also quite active as well. So morning meditation is, is, is very, very uh, uh, beneficial because we are very active. And once uh, we practice meditation and also we practice loving kindness meditation, and then when you go to work, you are very fresh. And then whenever you meet people, you always greet them very nicely. So even your whole day in the office can make it even uh, a better place to work even. So, so yeah, I think a morning meditation is quite uh, good actually. Yeah, so I, like, I know what loving kindness meditation is now because you've told me that before, but maybe if you could explain a little bit more what is exactly loving kindness meditation? So uh, I think whenever we practice uh, meditation, uh, before we end or before we stopping our uh, meditation, it is a good uh, uh, to practice loving kindness meditation. And when we say loving kindness meditation, it's especially uh, we have to uh, wish for ourselves and also uh, for our family members, close uh, family members, then extended family members and our friends, neighbors, so basically what happens, all of us, we, we, we have to be happy. We have to uh, progress in our life. We need peace, peace of mind. So we have to start with from ourselves. So we wish, may I be peaceful and be happy. And then only we can wish uh, peace and happiness for others. So we have to start from ourselves and then to everyone. And then we have to uh, wish for whole world actually including any kind of animals, maybe tiny or small, or any forms of life, even uh, visible or invisible, also any direction, above, below, any four or six directions. So this is how it means we want to uh, wish for every living beings, every single uh, living uh, beings in this world for their happiness, for their peace, and this is how it works. Once we develop this, generate this loving kindness, it actually comes to us because we are wishing for everyone loving kindness. So probably our hatred, our animosity, and our uh, anger, all these things will automatically start to reduce. And then uh, everybody else can uh, feel that we are a nice person and they can start to become very good friend to us. So this mm. is the way of whatever you are giving to people and this is what we will receive. Mm, yeah and then also i remember when you first told me about it about who you need to well, uh, who you should wish happiness for and you were saying um physical and non-physical beings and you said that i thought oh wow wait a second <laughs> explain that a bit more uh okay i think that is a quite a uh, uh, big topic but definitely we will be talking about that but for today i mean a little bit uh, in Buddhism, there are 31 planes of existence. So uh, basically, there are 31 type of uh, places where beings can live, we can, uh, beings can survive. And uh, some of them have only a very, very tiny uh, uh, forms of life. Even, I mean, if we talk about the virus or bacteria, they are so tiny that sometimes we can't see with our naked eye. So, so that could be, there is a only forms of life where there is a, have only consciousness. There is no body. We can't see with our naked eyes. So depend on, uh, uh, so this is why I say visible and individual. So individual, it, it uh, includes not only the tiny and small insects or, or, or any kind of bacteria, viruses or anything, but also a higher beings which have only consciousness, no body. Mm. So as I said, uh, these 31 planes of existence have higher and lower forms of life, which uh, need some time, but this is why uh, we include them as well, uh, that visible or invisible. But when we progress in meditation, we probably will be able to communicate them. them. Mm. Yeah, that's very, uh... I would say interesting, interesting theories of, of, of this religion. Um, and about that, like, if we start talking more about that uh, specific religion um, and the concepts and ideas, I would say 
the one of the things that you've said about it that are some, one of the that is one of the cornerstones of, of their thinking is that is that everything changes and nothing stays um, constant. That 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 has been a, one of the most powerful phrases that have stuck to me. You can apply it to many different different circumstances. Like when when everything's feeling wrong, then you say, "Okay, everything will pass. If nothing stays. It, this shall pass as well." And you can apply it for everything. And I think that that's a that's a very po very powerful um, saying to keep in mind. Yes, uh, thank you for remembering those things actually, because that is also a last word of the Buddha. When, before Buddha passed away uh, uh, in Kusinagar, he asked his disciples if they have any queries uh, to clarify any of his teachings, and nobody raised their hand. And that time Buddha said, uh, uh, in Pali it says, Vaya Sankara Apma Den Sampade. This is his final word before he went to uh, Mahaparinibbana. And it means, Buddha said, any conditional thing which we can see, which we can touch, which we can experience, is bound to change. So nothing is permanent. And this is why uh, it's very true. This is very powerful phrase because uh, even this COVID, sometimes it, it scares everyone. But we know that it will go away one day. And yeah. even in our uh, life, if something happens, especially some ups and downs, uh, especially when we uh, achieve uh, very, very high things in our life. We just go over the moon, but we shouldn't actually. We should still keep balance because that will change as well. But also when we lose something, we start to cry. And <laughs> so that is also, we should understand gaining, losing or gaining, they will also change. They are not going to stay permanently there. And this is a uh, also is good for people who go to depression or also sometimes they are so fed up with their life and they think oh there is no way uh, to be uh, in a happy place or be a good person or can change the circumstances everything is, is changeable including this earth including our body including our mind including every single things around us and this is what uh, by understanding this uh, whatever time we have we should utilize this time because uh, these things is related to our age as well. So for example, we have young age, we can become old, uh, sick, and even eventually we can die even. So this is why it is so the nature of changing life. And this is why when everything is changing, why not utilize every moment to be happy and do something good uh, when we are here? Mm, yeah. No, no, just now when you were saying something in What's the name of the language, Pati? Pati? Uh, it is called Pali language. That is Pali, the Pali. Yeah, sorry. Language. Now that you're saying, now that you're saying something in Pali, it it reminds me of um, when when I heard you saying some doing some chantings in Pali, and I, I I I was sick that day. I think it was hay fever or something like that. And after after you finished the the chantings, like two minutes afterwards, it the symptoms were gone and <laughs> I've, I've always been fascinated by that because I like don't know what it could be right it's don't know how that works it can be uh, um, something like the placebo effect that biologists don't understand pretty well yet um, or just belief there's there's a really good book on the biology of belief um, there's a lot of stuff going on there, whatever it is, that that helped me. <laughs> no, it's a, it's I, just, a, I just wanted to, 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 to point that out. Uh, because uh, this chanting, is especially uh, all the teachings or the, this chanting is uh, words of the Buddha, and this is also called the Dhamma. And when we say Dhamma, it means the truth. Whatever Buddha spoke was always the uh, truth, nothing else. So this is why truth has so much power. So when we speak truth and something even listen truth, so that is how it generates very powerful uh, 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 around uh, us, all the environment changes. And this is how uh, this Pali chanting is recommended by, I mean, in, in Buddhism. So we do like a morning and evening, if we can't focus, especially for meditation, 
when we go and do chanting, it's very easy to then start to focus and then we can start meditation after that. But also remembering this and chanting this Buddha's word, it helps us uh, uh, to generate this Dhamma and to remember this Dhamma, uh, uh, all the teachings as well. But also a uh, few occasions, for example, uh, one town in Vesali, when pandemic happened in Vesali, there was a plague in the town and Buddha sent uh, uh, monks to do chanting in that town. It is called uh, Ratan Sutta in Pali. That is, uh, uh, and that Sutta, monks, they went, they recited in that town. And after that, a rain came and it helped villagers uh, uh, through, through, to, to come out from those uh, very difficult times. So this, this chanting can be powerful, depend on our ability to receive it. So mm. if we, are, we have very good devotion and understanding and also we are we have ability then this chanting could be very powerful powerful for us for some people who don't know or or sometimes they don't have devotion they don't it won't work but if we have faith understanding and devotion and also uh, we have some kind of uh, uh, we know about buddha and and at least respect him and then if we listen it helps us definitely so, so I have no doubt that it helps and I'm really now sure now that it works. <laughs> so I really need yeah. to know this. <laughs> there you go, the power of the truth. Yeah, I just, um, from an academic biology perspective, it's, it's, it's an interesting topic. It is. Uh, <clears throat> and then, um, yeah, another question that I also wanted to discuss was where to do it like do you need to have a designated space to do the meditation it's like i do uh, i have my, my little corner where i like to go there because I, I don't know it kind of sets the mood i know that when i go there i go there to do that only uh, but is it necessary and also would you say do i need an altar or do i need something like i i, I i've seen you have an altar right uh, yes, uh, basically, uh, it's a good question, actually, and, and I think it's a quite uh, uh, good for, especially for beginners, to, uh, first thing is very important when we do meditation, we should do the proper area wherever is, is suitable, so, uh, so any place in your house where you find more uh, quiet and also, of course, it should be more uh, uh, peaceful place as well, where you can feel uh, uh, nice and, and uh, feel okay to sit down for, for concentration. Uh, but also when you talk about elder things, uh, we have a shrine room. <laughs> so any, every Buddhist uh, ministry or even people sometimes they, in their houses, they have Buddha statue. And to show the, like the respect to the triple gem, especially to Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. We sometimes light candles in front of Buddha. We do sometimes uh, do recite some chanting and uh, and then we sit down in meditation uh, in front of, or in the shrine room. But uh, sometimes you don't have to, especially if you are going to do concentration, you, if you don't feel that you, you want to have Buddha or anything, still meditation will work. If you sit down properly, as long as you have good understanding and, uh, and, uh, and you don't have to be Buddhist to do and achieve Nirvana. So anyone who, who want to practice uh, this technique, they will get enlightenment. Yeah, because that's the thing that I like, right, about meditation, that you don't need to practice any given religion, because, like, I don't. Uh, yes. Uh, but but you, you don't need to, to follow any religion in order no, to, no, to enjoy uh, the benefits of meditation. This is what Buddha taught. Buddha taught his teachings. It's called Dhamma for everyone. Uh, he, he, it was open for anyone. And... This is what he said, as long as you are practicing the right path, you bound to get uh, the results, enlightenment, no matter whatever you say yourself, a Buddhist or non-Buddhist, it doesn't matter. But yes, uh, because uh, uh, paying respect to Buddha because he taught us this Dhamma is a meritorious deed. So this is why it helps us more uh, to show, so showing respect even to our elders or anyone who has given something good to us is a meritorious deed. So this is why when we practice uh, putting lighting candles and this and that, because he given us this teaching and that we already generating some meritorious deeds. So this is how it, it still makes uh, some benefit 
doing chanting is a bursa buddha it is the truth is dhamma also bring peace and happiness in our life and also the chanting itself is uh, generate very powerful you know environment around us so it help us uh, to to get into meditation and into practice actually uh, one more thing i would like to add especially when we do practice meditation it should be one place we should try to keep the same direction maybe if possible same cushions and also uh, yeah same cushions same place and also it's better to have same time if we want to do seven o'clock six o'clock five o'clock whatever is suits to us if we can continue with the same time same cushions same area same direction then it will be very consistent and because that, that area we generate lots of energy through meditation it support us whenever we sit next day there what about the uh, i like this one this is uh and again, like from an academic perspective, talking about energies and all those things, it's, it's interesting. Um, so about this, um, yeah, say energies, mental wavelengths, I don't know, whatever that, that you release. What if it's negative? Like, are, are there any negative side effects of meditation? Uh, I think uh, uh, there is just some research I had done. Uh, I came to know uh, in America, in USA, about side effects of meditation. And they have tested a few students at university or in the hospital, and they found it can bring some, <laughs> some uh, negative effect. But the problem is uh, because the, those uh, uh, results were not very much uh, like, still like, uh, preliminary data is not like a very standard, it can be standard, but it's not like a proven or exactly they have, you know, proven that, but at least the preliminary data, they want to show that meditation can bring some, for example, fear, uh, lots of stress, confusion, uh, and also some people, they claim to see some, they visualize few other objects, so, so these kind of negative effects can come. But again, what I, I, I would uh, suggest that meditation is not here to take us to negative side. It's always to clean our, our mind, clear our mind from all the negativity, stress, anxiety, worries, you know. Uh, the only thing is they don't know. For example, when you are progressing in meditation, there is always a stage of meditation. For example, in general, there is uh, stages like a first stage of concentration, second stage of concentration, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. So when we go to the first stage of uh, the concentration, we, we feel certain maybe uh, we have to clear out few of our obstacles, but still we have certain things, for example, uh, lots of uh, joy, mental and physical happiness, and some kind of still thinking is there, some kind of investigation is going on into mind. So there are few things you will clear out, but still some defilements are still there. The only problem with the people who teach meditation, who doesn't know how to get into each stage, and sometimes when you progress through uh, mindfulness meditation, for example, uh, about the objects, uh, we need a good teacher, especially, who can explain to you, okay, you are here now, and you have reached such a stage, and because you are seeing this object, or because you are feeling fear, uh, because mm -hmm. you see people when they concentrate so well, they will, they don't feel even breath, and they fear they are going to die, because there is no breath. <laughs> yeah. You know, so lots of things happen, but this is the process of meditation, uh, when we develop good concentration, we can, we have few things which I will be discussing in the future, but, but this is how, uh, this is why we have to be careful. We need a good guidance. So whenever we practicing meditation, if we are fear, there is the reason because we have to move on and we need some guidance to know, to do the right. This is what we call right mindfulness, right concentration. So if we don't do right concentration, right mindfulness, it can bring some problem to us. And this is why it's really need to do uh, good guidance. And, and Buddha have given very, very clear guidance how to get progress in each stage.
Mm. Right, because I guess then you, you on top all these like unprocessed files in your brain and then you actually have to face the, the fears that you were just hiding behind your daily activities that so that you don't think about them. But once you pause and they, they come, they come up like your subconscious, the subconscious brain is, is quite smart. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, yeah it, will, it will bring up those topics that you were trying to run away from, right? Yeah, and exactly. I guess yeah, that, yeah. that could be. But, but it's, it's a really good question. And ne I, I, I had never ever somebody asked this question to me before. <laughs> so it's a really, yeah. really good question that we should know that why good guidance is very, very important when we do meditation. And if we really want to progress, uh, otherwise we are clueless because we might be going into advanced level of meditation, but we don't know what is happening. And we might feel fear, we might feel confusion because we don't know what is, uh, nobody is there to explain to them that what, what is this and how mm. to get this to the second stage. Mm. So, so I think it's a very, very important to, to, uh, to learn a good technique and, and, and so yeah. So uh, I think yeah. that uh, uh, today, I think we have a really, really good uh, topic about uh, meditation, but I think uh, we will be continue in the future uh, if some, uh, different topics which is related to meditation and some the teachings about the dhamma the which can beneficial to the people we will come back uh, with those things but thank you maria for all your sharing your experience with uh, uh, with uh, us today and definitely it will be very useful for uh, for new for beginners and also even people who are already practicing dhamma and meditation uh, here in the uk or any part of this world so thank you again and I Thank wish you, you all the best for your me. uh, uh, meditation as well. And, uh, and I hope to see you again uh, in, in our next uh, video.